Auto Traffic makes setting up a Docker traffic stack with proper Let's Encrypt certificate a breeze. In this video, I'm going to introduce version 2 of the Auto Traffic script. Hello everyone, Anand here from Smart Home Beginner again. A um, few weeks back, um, I published a script called Auto Traffic that simplifies setting up traffic for your home lab um, a breeze. I did that because I've been using traffic and Docker for several years and um, it can be a little tricky at times to get around. There are so many little details to think about. So I do have a detailed guide on Docker. Uh, it's nearly 11,000 words long. I've covered everything that you can think of in this guide right here. And then a follow-up guide for traffic as well, equally long with everything explained in detail and hundreds of thousands of people have already read it. Now, having said that, the purpose of the script was to simplify the setup and help you get started as quickly as possible with a setup that resembles what I have in my production environment. Also, um, the web, my website, smarthomebeginner.com, runs on the exact same setup it's all open to everybody to see what i have this is why i have my github repository that you see on the screen right here what you see here is what i'm using right now any changes i make is pushed to this repository so it's not that this is just a demo i am using it every day and there are examples for many apps on this repo that you can copy paste but the point is that sometimes it can still be tricky. So this is the reason why I, I put out this first version of the script, auto traffic. You might have already seen this video. Since then, I've re received a lot of feedback and improvement ideas. So I've continually worked um, to improve the script. When I started out, it was about thousand lines of, uh, of uh, script. Now it's about 2,800. So you can see from version one to where we are right now, version two, I've added nearly two times more um, uh, scripts and features into it. So the purpose of today's video is to introduce auto traffic version two, give, introduce all the different features and plus, I'm going to go through all the steps in a little bit more detail and publish them as a series of videos for the people who have purchased the script to use um, and to follow along to answer some of the questions that I have received. And like, for example, you've used the script to have traffic, socket proxy, um, uh, the, and portainer or whatever installed, but you don't know what to do after you've done that. How do I add more apps to my stack? Or let's say you're done with the script and you just want to get rid of it and, and start building your own stack using what the script created as a base. Uh, I'm going to cover all of those stuff here. So with that in mind, let's head over to the GitHub repo for the, the script, which is uh, auto traffic. I'll put the link in the description below. Okay, so first we're going to start with how do I get the script? Okay, so here on the GitHub repo, you can get some basic information. It's been tested on Ubuntu Debian and Open Media World. You also have a link to the first uh, the video that talks about the first version of the script. Today we're looking at the second version of the script. Right now we're at version 2.2.1. So how do you get the script? Here's the, here's the, here's the link. Now, where am I working on? Um, if you've been following my videos, I'm sure you know I really like Mobax Term as my SSH client, and um, the reason is I can uh, I can uh, I or also have a file browser on the left, and I can I can quickly pull up any file, create files, upload files. So, but that's not the purpose of this video. But I am SSH into my auto traffic development environment that's on uh, DigitalOcean. So. I'm at the, at the terminal right here, and we're gonna head over to my GitHub repo and copy this line over there that helps you get the script. We're gonna get, uh, we're gonna copy paste this line right there, and there you go. So download it, and we're gonna do an LSAL right there just to see, because I wanna highlight something here. So here is what we downloaded. 
Notice that it's RW, read, write, read, write, and a dash. That means it's not an executable at this point. The X is missing. So you'll have to make that script executable, which is what is shown here. So we're going to copy this one. You don't really need sudo, um, but just in case. Um, so we made that executable right now. And um, if I do the same again, you're going to see now it says uh, RWX, RW x and rx so it's now executable um, keep in mind in my environment i already added the user anand and i have also added this user to sudoers list that's not covered in this um, in this tutorial so basically you have to have a new user the script can do it but uh, do it for you but i don't want to cause any confusion so better create the user yourself add the user to sudoers list so you can use the sudo command to elevate your privileges when needed because that is required for the script to work so now we've seen how to how to get the script and how to change it so you can execute it now how do you execute it right here is the command uh, don't forget the dot in front of the line it's not a mistake or a typo so you do need the dot so there you go since i will i already elevated my privileges once i wasn't asked for the the root user password as it says right here but many times you will have or if you're starting out for the first time you may be asked for the, the ask for the root password or elevate your privileges using the sudo command so you'll have to type in your password before you start using the script okay so um, first time you start the script, it's going to install some of the basic packages like JQ, Dialog, and Curl. These are com these are commands that are used by the script to uh, or, or packages that are used by the script to to run uh, some of the features. Um, it also tells you that you're using version 2.2.1, and that is um, that is the correct version. This is a new feature also I implemented compared to uh, previous version one there it runs a, a version check and if there is a, a new version you will be notified so you can download and start over okay all right now i didn't press anything it waits for about 60 seconds and, and takes you to the main menu so we're going to start um with the main menu here so you can see this is again a big difference from version one now it's a little bit more mo modular you can go through uh, one step at a time starting from step number one um, another minor change is that I've made parts of the script available for free for anyone that wants to use it because many people follow my guides but they do not have all the checks and balances in place before they start over so they make mistakes and so I've made that part of the script free where you can use the script to check do I have my port forwarding working do I have my DNS records set properly these checks can be done automatically by the script and you don't really need to pay anything to use this feature. So steps one, two, and three are free for anybody to use. So let's start um, start going through some of the features here. You will notice that it says it's an unregistered version right now. Okay, so for now, that's again, it's, it's fine. Um, since I am using my dev development environment, I already have been testing the script quite a uh, many times. And there will be some leftover files here and there. So I'm going to go take this opportunity to show you the, the auto traffic script options where you can do your license check. You can see the status of your script, what's been installed using the script and what hasn't been installed and things of that sort. You can view auto traffic constants. What basically this means is that some of the required information you provided for the script to run successfully. You can see those values right here. You can generate a sanitized auto traffic log. What does it mean? It, the script is capable of removing all the sensitive information that you provide out of the logs and it creates a sanitized log that you can share on our Discord server when you re request for support. This way I get to see how the script ra ran without ha seeing any of your sensitive information then I can provide feedback on what might be happening if there are any issues or things like that. And finally, reset auto traffic status, which is what I'm going to do today. I'm going to reset it so I can start over. It's, it's telling me that it's going to delete all the leftover 
information i'm just going to say yes and now it should go back to the main menu in 60 seconds but i'm just going to press s enter and i'm back here now while you're on the menu you can hit the escape key anytime to go back to the previous menu or you can hit the back um, choose the back option right there um, this is a little bit navigating through the menu can be a little bit tricky you're going to use your uh, arrow keys to go up and down and enter to select and escape to go back uh, and also you'll see that when you start entering information it can be a little bit tricky as well with version 2 i added a lot more features authentication version 1 had just basic authentication if you needed to add google oauth or Othelia or authentic or other things you're on your own yeah well you have a basic framework to build on but you had to do it manually so with version 2 i've added Othelia, which is something that i've used for two three years now um, it's uh, it's a multi-factor authentication that you can self-host and it's definitely recommended over having just basic authentication which is what was done by default for you so you have the option to do that right now and you also have the option to install additional applications here so we'll see this I think this would be a good point to stop with the description on how the script looks like and how it works and all of that stuff. So let's start diving in right now. If you haven't liked the video or my channel yet, please do so. So I'm just starting out and every bit of support from people who watch the videos will really help me grow my channel. It helps the YouTube algorithm see that you find my videos valuable and I get more visits on my videos. So.